Welcome back, Nerd Boxers, to a long-awaited Easter egg video that includes more than just one or two. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience. We know a lot of people have been waiting for more Easter egg videos, and we're going to kick it off with something special. It is the 40th anniversary of Poltergeist. It is coming back into theaters. So when you go back to theaters to see it, if you do, we have a little companion to go with it, and that is these Easter eggs, including a lot of exclusive ones that have never been talked about before that we found. Now, since everybody's been patient, which we appreciate, we thank you for that patience, because these do take some time to create, you're getting three more Easter egg videos over the next two months. You're getting Terrifier 1, you're getting Halloween 2018, and you're getting the second most requested one, which is Behind the Mask, the rise of Leslie Vernon in November. You may get a special treat in October with Terrifier 2. It is a wait and see for that one because we have not seen that film yet. So we don't know if there is a lot there to talk about. Yeah. Though I heard that there is. <laughs> so let's kick it off and talk about Poltergeist Easter egg and references. In the opening scene of the movie, we see the Freeling's dog, Eva's making the rounds, scavenging for food while everyone else is sleeping. This is our first Easter egg. One of the definitions for Eva's is a low sound of many voices in conversation. White noise, people, EVP. So I found that one very interesting. Uh, what I did find really interesting was his name, Eva. So it's like, what? That's gotta mean something. I, yeah, it would have to, right? Because that's such a, an odd name. And I, I mean, people do name their animals some pretty weird things, but Eva's. Yeah, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Steve Freeling is fast asleep in the living room to the sound of white noise coming from the static of the television. Eva checks on Robbie, and we see things here, but we will save that for later. Eva nudges Carol Ann awake after visiting the living room. She finds her way downstairs, and we see a set of blocks on top of the TV. An upside down lowercase p, a capital I, the number five, and a capital D. The fifth letter in the alphabet is the letter E. Thus, the blocks spell out died. Yeah, I was... I just got goosebumps. <laughs> I was ecstatic when I seen that. And I think I harassed my wife while we are watching a movie several times. Like, wait! Frame, frame, frame. And it's like, yes, I was right. That is what it is. So that is we even had to take our phones out and take pictures and try to zoom in that way to make sure that it's definitely what we saw. Mm -hmm. He's really annoying people. I hope you appreciate this. Oh, I love that Easter egg. So take it as an ominous warning for what is about to come or the secret of what is going on underneath the house, buried under the ground. Or maybe it's tied to the curse of her guys, and they didn't even realize that they spelled out those blocks and shit just happened. Could be. The next day, Steve has a bunch of friends over to watch football. Hanging on the wall to the left of the TV is a picture of Michael Myers. Because why not? <laughs> Say what you will. Nobody's talked about this. I saw it maybe a year ago or so when we were watching. It's like, is that Michael Myers? And I never really did anything with it because Oh, we were on YouTube a few years ago when we watched yeah. this and I caught it. But going back, pausing on it now, I did a search on the internet to see if anybody else caught it. One person had said the same thing and he was thinking the same way as I was. It's like, you know what? Ain't nobody else talk about it, so I'm just going to call out. It's right there. It is Michael Myers. And that's what I saw a few years ago. I can't say I'm the first one to claim it because he's the first one online with it. But, yes, it is definitely Michael Myers in that picture. The game that is on is the Los Angeles Rams versus the New Orleans Saints. It's taken from a Monday night football game in 1980. Diane Freeling soon discovers that Carol Ann's yellow canary bird has died. Oh. Oh, shit. Tweety, couldn't you have waited for school day? Tweety, for those that do not know, is from the popular cartoon back from when we were kids and way beyond that, Looney Tunes, which featured Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and Tweety Bird versus typically Sylvester. Yeah, Sylvester was always trying to eat the bird. Uh -huh. I forget the old woman's name. I always do. Granny. 
simple enough. <laughs> How do you forget that? I don't it's know. just Granny. <laughs> <laughs> but they but Tweety called her Granny. Yeah. Back into the living room during the football game, the Freelings next door neighbor has a similar remote control that they do. And his kids want to watch Mr. Rogers, so he turns Mr. Rogers on the Freelings TV. I don't care what you're watching, Ben. Just show a little mercy with that thing. Shortly after, Caroline catches her mother trying to flush Tweety down the toilet. They opt to bury the bird in an old cigar box. Carol Ann says to her mom, Tweety doesn't like that smell. Sweet. Now, we would not find out until later what that smell was. This is what the Freelings used to stash their pot. That brings us to the kids' room, which is full of pop references and Easter eggs. Diane tells Carol Ann if she keeps feeding the fish, they will turn into sharks, referencing Steven Spielberg's blockbuster Jaws, 1975. Robbie is in the bed reading a Captain America comic book. Now, while this is not a Marvel movie, it's like, ah, ain't nothing hidden with this Captain America comic book. But I was wrong. For those that are interested, this issue is 259. And the issue is titled Rite of Passage. And in this book, Cap has an uneasy feeling that someone is following him. But he is unable to reveal that person until the end. And it sounds like Poltergeist, just in the comic book form. Mm -hmm. We see Robbie wearing an L.A. Dodgers baseball hat. There are precious moments pictures outside of their room and on a poster or two on Carol Ann's side of their room. All the Star Wars merchandise we are going to count as one reference. For Star Wars, we have a C-3PO light switch plate, a Star Wars New Hope poster, a Darth Vader poster, and a C-3PO with R2-D2 poster, an Empire Strikes Back blanket on Robbie's bed, a TIE fighter near the window, the gun turret and probot playset from the Empire Strikes Back, a jacket with a picture of Chewbacca on the back, which Robbie tosses on the clown later in the film, a Tauntaun figure with Han Solo in Hoth gear, behind Robbie's bed, a large Yoda puppet, a Darth Vader action figure carrying case, and several action figures, including a Stormtrooper, Luke Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, FX-7 medical droid, and R2-D2. I love all the toys in that clip. Of course you do. Mm-hmm. Nice little collection there. Moving on, we have on the closet door a Bert and Ernie poster. Oh, that goes well with Star Wars. Right? <laughs> you have all that Star Wars stuff in there, and then you have Bert and Ernie. Yeah. Interesting. I guess that was for Carol Ann. Even though it wasn't on her door, maybe they shared the closet. Also in that room is an artifact from a past civilization from multiple generations and toy collectors, and that is a Toys R Us Jeffrey the Giraffe sleeping bag. I miss Toys R Us. That's supposedly coming back up again. Yeah, but it's like pop-up stores. It's not anything special. Mm -hmm. You gotta start somewhere, I guess. Yes. There is a speak and spell on the shelf. No, Jen, I never had one. You don't need to rub it in like you did before. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is uh, it really shows that you never had one. <laughs> <sighs> then on the floor is Cario, the Micronauts carrying case. There's an alien poster on the wall in Robbie's room. Both Poltergeist and Alien were scored by film composer Jerry Goldsmith. Now, Aliens fit Star Wars. Much better than Bert and Ernie. And how, how crazy is it if you think about it today, right? Disney owns Star Wars. Disney bought Fox and now owns Aliens. Hmm. Another futuristic prediction in that room. There is a poster of Magic Johnson from the Lakers, Slam Dunking. Robbie has a poster in his room for Super Bowl Twenty Two which would not take place for another six years. No explanations on that one. So we have the aliens, we have Star Wars owned by Disney, we have this poster that's for a Super Bowl in the future that is tied to a scary story on the Pop 5, but 
in case you do not know why that poster is significant. Heather O'Rourke, who plays Carol Ann, passed at a very young age. And she actually went into the hospital on the day that this Super Bowl in the poster took place six years later and did pass away. The following day. The following day. So, yeah, that gives me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. That's really, that, that one kind of chokes me up a little because that's just, that's beyond. <laughs> I just don't get why a poster a poster would be there for a future Super Bowl. Just doesn't make any sense. And getting back to less sad things, there is a Rubik's Cube. Let's talk about some more hidden clues. Like the board game, Clue. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some interesting board games in here as well. Like the Family Feud board game. The latter being the most interesting choice because the former is telling the family to get a clue and the latter is essentially what starts to happen. Yeah. And then last we see a football helmet for the LA Rams. After the kids are in bed, Steve and Diane are hanging out in their room watching A Guy Named Joe, a movie about a dead person who is still hanging around. Next to the TV is a Snoopy and Woodstock pole toy. Yeah, his ears spun around I think as you yeah. pulled them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you would uh, pull him, his head would go back and forth like this, and his ears would spin. When Diane is in bed with Steve talking about Carol Ann's behavior, Steve takes a book in his hands. That book is Reagan, the man, the president. Frightened by the lightning storm and the clown in his room, Robbie goes to his parents' room. We're on top of the television, sits an Atari 2600. After Steve takes Robbie back to bed, he opens the door to his eldest daughter's room where we see a Laurel and Hardy poster hanging on the wall. Then Thar Hills. I spotted it, you figured out what it was, and it has no meaning to this movie that I can find. Yeah, he spotted it and couldn't figure out who it was on the poster. Don't ask me, I don't know how for the life of me that I could figure out it was Laurel and Hardy because didn't watch it, but knew who they were. But yeah, I figured out it was Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> so maybe that's something too. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of an Abbott and Costello guy. <laughs> Shortly after, Robbie and Carol Ann end up sleeping in their parents' bed. And once again, the TV is left on playing to just four walls. Carol Ann is suddenly woken up by the static coming from the TV and she crawls across her bed, goes onto the floor and sits down in front of the TV. The TV station or the time on the TV shows 2.37. This could be an homage to the hotel room in The Shining 2.37. Yeah, honestly, I would say that it is because if you think about it, right, that's not like the ghosting hour mm -hmm. because that's between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So we're prior to that at this point. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it has to do with The Shining. The next morning, the family is having breakfast while some union workers are working outside, digging a hole in their backyard to put in an in-ground pool. We see one of the workers hold up a rolled up blueprints to the pool to his eye like a telescope something that you would see Captain Jack Sparrow do or a pirate do right no big deal but that person's name in the film is Bluto Bluto is from Popeye the sailor later that night when Steven gets home Diane shows him what they discovered with the poltergeist in the house being able to slide Carol Ann across the floor this next one is not an Easter egg or a reference, but worth calling out. While Steven looks on, baffled by what had happened, there is a jump cut from the scene where Diane is explaining to Steven about the feeling you get when the spirit pulls you across the floor. The reason for the cut was because in the original scene, Steven says how he hates Pizza Hut. The scene was edited, rather crudely, after Pizza Hut took offense. Oh, boo-hoo. I've just had one of the most disgusting lunches I've ever had. That reminds me of the one match on AEW 
where you had one guy pull out a pizza cutter, rolling it across John Moxley's head in a pitcher and pitcher commercial with Domino's. <laughs> they weren't too happy either. After Caroline is taken, Stephen meets with Dr. Lesh and her associates at the college. The backward writing on the office door reads, Department of Popular Beliefs, Superstitions, and Parapsychology. I didn't know they had those type of things back then. Having seen and recently reviewed the entity mm -hmm. for our upcoming 31 Days of Halloween, yeah, this stuff existed back then too. It seems like it was more accepted in schools and colleges back then than it is now. Yeah, so they were literally like teaching this stuff in colleges back then, which is interesting considering the day and age that we're in now, and I don't think that this is like a college course you take. I don't think I've ever seen that on any college uh, no. criteria. It's like, oh, I can go study about ghosts? I'm going there. Yeah, I mean, I took behavioral psychology, but I would have much preferred parapsychology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta be honest. Would have been a hell of a lot more fun. Probably. Back at the home, Stephen tours with the research team. Ryan tells Stephen about the paranormal event they caught on tape in Redlands, California. That's right. It was a child's toy. A very small matchbox vehicle just rolled seven feet across a linoleum surface. The duration of the event was seven hours. The city of Redlands is allegedly one of the most haunted towns in America. From apparitions of a boy swinging on a swing at Mariposa Elementary School, to hearing footsteps run across the stage at Prospect Park to an even more frightening demonic face that appears inside the Barton Mansion. When they open the door, we see Hulk from the Marvel Comics riding a horse. Okay, now before we go any further, remember it is our quest for 5,000 subscribers. And how you can help get us there is by checking to see if you're subscribed to the channel. If you aren't, click that little button. Don't worry about the notification bell because the videos will always be there when you're ready to watch them. And you will be entered into a contest to win Strawberries and Scream, the box of cereal signed by Matthew Lillard and David Arquette. This is not sold here in the United States. It's only available in the UK, of course, without the signatures. So this is a one of a kind that you get a chance to win it. Along the way, every video that gets 100 comments and 100 likes, you'll win a prize, whether it's a poster, a coloring book, a Top Gun pin, a comic book from the Batman, or a full-size poster. Oh my. So. And you can also help us help you by liking and sharing any content of ours that you really like. Yes, and remember, not on just this show here that you're watching, but we talk about a lot of independent filmmakers and artists that are up and coming. So you want to go out and check those out and learn about people like Glenn Payne, or Michael Levy, or Damian Leone. There's a whole ton of people that are out there doing some excellent work that you'll probably be interested in. So. Andrew Fitzgerald. Yes, definitely. Mm. All right, let's get back to those Easter eggs. We then see a compass needle touch a record, causing it to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The research team sets up for the night and Marty is hungry. He raids the kitchen and is freaked out when he sees a raw steak crawl across the counter, causing the chicken leg he had in his mouth to fall to the floor. When he looks down, he notices that it is covered in maggots. Mm. I bit into an apple once and then realized that something mm. didn't taste right and looked in the apple and that's what was in it. He quickly flushes his mouth out with water and when he looks into the mirror, he begins to peel his own face. The hands peeling the face are actually Steven Spielberg's hands. The next morning, the paranormal researchers are recapping the previous night's events with the Freelings. Steven asks for the story not to be on the next episode of 60 Minutes. Diane also mentions that it should not play on That's Incredible either. Both TV shows, very popular at that time. Later that day, Mr. Teague picks up Steven and takes him to the firm's new building site, where he reveals that it will be the location of Steven's next new house. They're talking in front of a tree that is nearly identical to the tree that is outside of Carol Ann and Robbie's window. Just smaller. 
When Tangina arrives at the home later that night, played by Zelda Rubenstein, I miss her. Yeah, she was a cute old lady. She was. <laughs> and this is the first of her two out of four Easter egg appearances. She happens to say that this house is filled with many hearts. Literally, the house is filled with lots of heart-shaped items. For example, there's our heart-shaped lamp. There's a heart stuck on the wall. There's a heart poster with a green heart balloon in the children's bedroom. And then Diane in her own room has a heart shaped box on her end table. Like, ironic? No. <laughs> <laughs> After they begin to cleanse the house, Diane goes into the portal to rescue Carol Ann. Crossover children! She falls through the other side of the portal, cradling her daughter, in the same exact manner of the woman cradling a child in a painting behind them. Before Diane Freeling is attacked by the spirits after her bath, a black and white picture of an older woman is placed over the picture of Carol Ann. This is believed to be one of the many evil spirits in the house. After Diane escapes the attack, she runs to her children's room where she is confronted by one of the poltergeists that roars. <laughs> the roar is the MGM lion roar, the distributor of the film. That is pretty awesome. Now I hear all the time. Of course. So this next one is interesting and creepy all at once. Later Diane runs outside for help and falls into the hole where their pool is going to be placed. When suddenly skeletons start to float to the surface. <laughs> These skeletons are real. Now I know a lot of people know this one already but you still got to call it out. And this is not the first or last time that Steven Spielberg has done this. No, because as it turns out, you can get these skeletons from medical colleges for free or very low price rather than buying fake ones because that would be more expensive. So there you have it. And people pick on Ed Gein. Right? Yet Steven Spielberg did it back in 1982. He, he didn't dig it up, but he paid for it. Same yeah, thing. Because I think you, all you have to do is like, you know, give them like 10 bucks and sometimes they'll even just like give them to you because they're done with their research on them. So they'll just give them to you instead of going to like a Halloween store and buying them because that would be, you know, more money. Hmm. When the Freelings finally do escape, they check into a Holiday Inn where the sign reads, Welcome Dr. Fantasy and Friends. Dr. Fantasy is a nickname for producer Frank Marshall. I don't even want to know. I don't want to know either. That's a weird nickname. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I don't want to know. <laughs> so our final Easter egg is the theme music that plays is known as Carol Ann's theme. It was originally titled Bless This House and written like a lullaby. That's a good one too. That makes sense too because Carol Ann was like this cute little it just it fits right that it would be like Carol Ann's theme to be like a lullaby because she just mm -hmm. looks like this little kid that you just like rock to sleep mm -hmm. she was such a cute kid so there you have it we are back with some Easter eggs a lot of exclusive ones in here that nobody's ever talked about and this is the first of a series of four that are coming out from now through November maybe a fifth one depending on what Terrifier 2 shows mm -hmm. now if you want to see a movie dissected and have the easter eggs found drop it in the comments let us know what you like i'm not going to be putting up a poll until sometime in october to see what easter egg videos that we should be doing next because we're concentrating on halloween content but yeah and if any of those movies get announced on what we're doing and you find an easter egg and you share that with us then you get the credit in the video so you can go back and check out this second Scream Easter Egg video for the movie that came out this year. And you will see that everybody that contributed Easter eggs to the second part of the Scream 5 Easter eggs had their name called out. 
Yeah, and thus far, I think we're kind of the only YouTube channel that does that. Mm -hmm. Gives the credit to the person who actually brought it to us. We're not gonna take the credit for something we didn't find. No. You found it, I'm gonna put your name there and say, this this is who found it. Yeah, one of our subscribers, we were talking about Poltergeist and he mentioned something. He's like, hey, look, if I connect this and you do a show on it, will you give me a shout out? It's like, heck yeah. Yeah. That's your idea or your Easter egg. I'm going to give you the credit for it. Yeah, we'll put your name right in there with your tagline from Twitter or, you know, whatever your handle is. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows it's you. Yep. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget it is the quest for 5,000 subscribers and say and be a part of us growing to be a bigger channel and you can take credit for it. Yeah. Okay. And you help us and we help you. Yep. And until the next. See ya. See ya.